This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. In this chapter, we revisit the use of assertions that we first looked at in chapter 10. And we're revisiting it because the idea of assertions and the idea that we require evidence to support each of the assertions is so very important in auditing and in the exam. So to reiterate, if you remember uh, that the idea of an assertion was uh, that a figure on the statement of financial position or on the uh, statement of profit or loss uh, isn't just like a single figure saying one thing. It's a figure which says many, many things. It makes a, a number of assertions or a number of claims or a number of proclamations. And we have to get evidence, sufficient appropriate evidence, that each one of these assertions is okay. So uh, if you were dealing with inventory, uh, then the figure of inventory, let's say it's a million dollars, we need some evidence that it is reasonably accurate. We need some evidence that we have managed to include all of it, and we haven't forgotten some, uh, in a different warehouse. We need uh, some evidence, perhaps, that cut-off is correct, uh, that uh, the, 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 the receipt and the dispatch of goods uh, was handled accurately at year-end, uh, so that uh, we, uh, you know, maybe didn't dispatch or leave out some goods that were still on the way towards the dispatch uh, bay, uh, that we didn't maybe omit those from inventory. Allocation is important in inventory to make sure that we uh, feed into manufactured inventory the right amount of labour and fixed overhead, fixed factory overhead. Classification and presentation. Uh, are we describing the inventory correctly? Have we got maybe the split between raw material, finished goods uh, and work and progress done uh, properly? Are we making the presentations that might be required either by statute or by accounting standard. We need uh, uh, occurrences more to do with uh, items in the statement of profit and loss, but valuation is a very key one in inventory. Have we complied with the accounting standard, which says that inventory should be valued at the lower of cost and net realizable value? And we need evidence for that. We need evidence about its cost. We need evidence about the net realizable value. And we need evidence that the client has, has gone for the lower of each of those uh, for every piece of inventory. Does the inventory actually exist? It's all very well saying, well, we have book records recording the inventory, but the book records may be wrong. Uh, have we gone and, for example, inspected any of that inventory to make sure it really does still exist? And finally, rights and obligations. Uh, you see a piece of inventory, uh, and some, some, some item of stock. How do you know the company owns it? How do you know that perhaps the company, uh, perhaps in a shop, uh, hasn't got goods on what is called sale or return, that they're not simply hosting another uh, 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 person's inventory in the hope that it might sell, that it should be validly included in the inventory which we actually own. You should remember that the assertions divide into two uh, uh, classes. Well, they can be remembered by ACCA cover, but then the two classes or two groupings of these assertions, transactions and events, which are primarily to do with profit and loss account, and account balances, which is primarily to do with amounts on the statement of financial position. And you must know which assertions belong to which grouping because the examiner is very likely to ask you to describe maybe four assertions dealing with transaction events or maybe four assertions dealing with account balances and you mustn't get them mixed up. Although obviously there's some overlap we'll see uh, between these assertions. You may also be asked to, to say what sort of evidence might support the assertion. So the assertion of existence uh, can be supported by evidence of inspection. Similarly, if you say that somebody should go and inspect some items of inventory, you should really, you should say why you're doing it. What assertion is inspection of inventory or inspection of non-current assets? Why are we doing that test? 
And the reason you're doing the test is because it's giving you some evidence that certain assertions are correct. So it's a two-way flow, really. Uh, you have to be able to say for a given assertion what evidence would support it. And if you're doing a an order test, particularly a substantive test, you have to say why you're doing it. What's the purpose of this test? What assertion is it hoping us to uh, helping us uh, to get evidence about? The two uh, uh, groups. First of all, we have the uh, the assertions primarily to do with income statement assertions. Uh, th this is to do with transactions and events, and this is it. How do we know that sales actually occurred? And the sort of evidence you could get is, is maybe going to the from a sales item, a credit in the sales ledger, going back to seeing the invoice that gave rise to that credit, not in the sales ledger, but in the sales account, the invoice that gave rise to that credit in the sales account. Uh, and then you go back, well, here's a dispatch, and that's the invoice, and that's the credit in the sales account. And then you go back to the order. So we have order going to dispatch, going to invoice, going to the credit in the sales account. Uh, and that is evidence that the sale actually occurred, that it was a real sale. If you didn't have that, how do you know the credit going into the sales account was really a sale? Uh, how do you know it wasn't maybe somebody putting capital into the company? Or maybe it was a sale of a non-current asset? Or maybe it was money laundering? Maybe there had been no order at all, but some cash just kind of floated in, uh, and, and they treated this as a sale to disguise its you know, illegal source. Completeness, uh, we want to make sure that uh, all, this is particularly, we would we'll be particularly concerned maybe with expenses that maybe somebody had left out, you know, you had your, your roof repaired on the, uh, the 15th of December. Uh, we want to make sure that the, we have proper accruals or we've got the invoices in uh, for those repairs right up to, to year end. So we have all of the expenses complete. Accurate. For example, are they splitting the VAT, the, the, the tax, out of the expenses and dealing with that appropriately? Cut off. That sales in 2017 were really goods dispatched in 2017, uh, that we hadn't brought in something from 2018, perhaps to, to boost our sales in some way and therefore to boost our profits. Classification that the expenses are right in, in the right kind of slots. And at presentation, uh, for, for example, uh, that we are properly presenting directors' emoluments. Presentation, you can think of that, I think, as being disclosures. That's uh, uh, because, of course, we are auditing disclosures made in the notes to the financial statements. Here they are for the year-end balances. Uh, again, the uh, non, the uh, statement of financial position. Do the assets and liabilities exist? Are they belonging to us? Have we got all the liabilities in particular complete, but also the assets, are they complete? Uh, accuracy and valuation, right depreciation applied to non-current assets, writing down inventory is required, making allowances for bad debts is required, allocating expenses into your work and progress and finished goods, uh, classified, maybe non-current assets and uh, non-current liabilities and current liabilities, amounts due over one year, less than one year, you would have to go up uh, over and, and, and inspect the loan documents. When is the loan repaid? Uh, because if you don't inspect the loan documents, how do you know the classification is right? So every one of these uh, uh, assertions requires evidence. If the internal control system is very good, then you will be able to rely uh, to a large extent on the internal control system uh, uh, that, that will reliably really mean that most of the time the assertions are correct. So a, a good internal control system, uh, which is maybe recording inventory, uh, uh, receipt of it in, uh, sending it out and so on, uh, if the book stock is kept very, very accurately, then of course you have got quite good evidence about the existence and the completeness of inventory. And the amount of work that you have to do uh, as substantive tests to actually go and uh, verify the inventory at year end is cut down. 
Similarly, in your transactions and events, if you've got a very, very good internal control system, then more or less like clockwork, if an order comes in, the dispatch is made, the invoice is sent out, it will end up in the sales account very, very reliably. And if the internal control system is very, very reliable, then we as auditors have to do less direct tracing, if you like, from sales back to orders. Uh, and of course, if you want to do completeness, you'd have to go the other way, the way you would ascertain that uh, uh, the sales in the sales account are complete, is you'd pick some orders at random, say, here are the orders, have the dispatches been made, have the invoices been raised, did those invoices end up going to the sales account in the nominal ledger? That's the way you would ascertain completeness. But much less of these substantive tests would have to be done if the internal control system was kind of watertight, very, very good. You, know, you can rely on the client's system and the client's processes of checks and double checks and authorizations and reconciliations and so on uh, as accomplishing uh, the accuracy and so on required uh, for the financial statements. But assertions are fantastically important.